Hello everyone! Today's video will be something different than usual, something special that I have planned for you. I've been working with Michael Knotts and the Pursuing Love group to bring to you this message. Every day, Michael, Sterling, Marsha, Ju Judy and Alicia get together and create these encouraging messages every single day. This one is about love and unity, and it moved me so much to turn it into a YouTube video. It's truly a beautiful, beautiful message. So the following verses and commentary are not my own, but from my beautiful brothers and sisters in the Pursuing Love group. I hope you all enjoy, and I hope that you're all edified by it. Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. This morning we have 59 degrees Fahrenheit as we begin our day looking into scriptures for the truth found in Paul's Evangel. There is so much encouragement to be discovered because it's found in the truth that was given to him from the risen Christ. Let's see what we find in Philippians chapter four, verse or chapter two, verse four. Not each noting that which is his own, but each that of others also. We are learning to see others through the love of Christ. I noticed the word others in this verse. Loving others as yourself is being brought into focus here. As we learn to properly love ourselves as Christ loves us, we are able to love others also. And regarding others, we learning we are learning to consider others' needs as well as our own. We are all one in Him. We see this talked about in Ephesians three, seventeen to nineteen. Christ to dwell in your hearts for faith that you, having been rooted and grounded in love, should be strong to grasp together with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. To know the love of Christ as well, which transcends knowledge, that you may be completed for the entire completement of God, the riches of the love of Christ, for us compels us in our love for one another. We are learning to love others as ourselves. Now, in looking at what Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, we see that faith, expectation, love, these three will be remaining. There is a wonderful story in these three words. Standing strong in the faith, we have the expectation of love, which is our happy expectation. This is the purpose of what we are doing as we continue pursuing love. We are walking in his love, pursuing truth found in Paul's Evangel, which was written for us today. We desire to be a benefit to everyone around us. We have been appointed the stewardship of all creation. Love is the only way through which this can be accomplished. We find in 1 Corinthians that God is not for turbulence, but peace. We see in Titus chapter 2, verses 12 to 14, training us that, disowing irreverence and worldly desires, we should be living sanely and justly and devoutly in the current aeon, anticipating that happy expectation, even the advent of the glory of the great God and our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who gives himself for us, that he should be redeeming us from all lawlessness and be cleansing for himself a people to be about him, zealous for ideal acts. This is the beginning of expressing his love. Knowledge is becoming the tool of love in which we are growing in the growth of God together we are standing strong together, standing in truth and not noting that which is his own, not just focusing on ourselves, but being mutually focused, helping each other grow towards maturity. We are one in Christ. Christ is equal to his Father. We are able to have direct access to the Father, the same as Christ. By standing firm together, Paul is saying this in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 to 16. Now, being true in love, we should be making all grow into him who is the head, Christ, out of whom the entire body, being articulated together and united through every assimilation of the supply in accord with the operation and measure of each one's part, is making for the growth of the body, for the upbuilding of itself in love. The tie of maturity is love. God is so merciful and gracious to us, he has a lot of patience with us. It's how he teaches us. He loves us all so much. We have many differences, yet we are united in God's love. Always be pursuing love. Everything else comes second. The writings of Paul 
are focusing on love all through it. We are to be becoming imitators of God, Ephesians 5.1, which we can see in the fruit of the Spirit, found in Galatians 5.23-26. With that, this verse comes to mind in Ephesians 4.31. Let all bitterness and fury and anger and clamor and calamity be taken away from you with all malice, yet become kind to one another, tenderly, compassionate, dealing graciously among yourselves, according as God also in Christ deals graciously with you. Let's look at what we find in the references tied to this verse. Philippians 2, 4 Not each noting that which is his own, but, eat that, but each that of others also. Romans twelve fifteen. So as to be rejoicing with those rejoicing, lamenting with those lamenting. Romans fourteen nineteen to twenty two. Consequently, then, we are pursuing that which makes for peace and that which is for edification of one another, not on account of food demolished, the work of God. All, indeed, is clean, but it is evil to the man who with stumbling is eating. It is ideal not to be eat eating meat, nor yet to be drinking wine, nor yet to be do aught by which your brother is stumbling or is being snared or weakened. The faith which you have... Have for yourself in God's sight. Happy is he who is not judging himself in that which he is attesting. Romans 5, 1, 2. Being then justified by faith, we may be having peace toward God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have the access also by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we may be glorying in expectation of the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 8, 9 to 13. Now beware, lest somehow this right of yours may be, may be become a stumbling block to the weak. For if any one should be seeing you who has knowledge, lying down in an idol shrine, will not the conscience of him who is weak be in be inured be to the eating of the idol sacrifices? For the weak one is perishing also by your knowledge. The brother become of whom Christ died, now in thus sinning against brethren, and beating the weak conscience, you are sinning against Christ. Wherefore, if food is snaring my brother, I may under no circumstances be eating meat for the eon, lest I should be snaring my brother. 1 Corinthians 10, 23-24 All is allowed me, but not all is expedient. All is allowed me, but not all is edifying. Let no one be seeking the welfare of himself, but that of another. 1 Corinthians 10, 32-33 And become not a stumbling block to Jews as well as to Greeks, and to the ecclesia of God, according as I also am pleasing all, in all things, not seeking my own ex expedience, but that of the many, that the many, that they may be saved. 1 Corinthians 12, 22-26 Nay, much rather those members of the body supposed to be inherently weak, weaker are necessary, and which we suppose to be a more dishonoured part of the body, these we are investing with more exceeding honour, and our indecent members have more exceeding respectability. Now our respectable members have no need, but God blends the body together, giving to that which is deficient more exceeding honour, that there may be no schism in the body, but the members may be mutually solicitous for one another. And whether one member is suffering, all the members are sympathizing, or one member is being esteemed, all the members are rejoicing with it. 1 Corinthians 13, 1-5 If I should be speaking in the languages of men and of the messengers, yet should have no love, I have become resounding copper or a clanging cymbal. And if I should have prophecy and should be perceiving all secrets and all knowledge and if i should have all faith so as to transport mountains yet have no love i am nothing and if ever i should be morseling out all my possessions and if i should be giving up my body that i should be boasting yet may have no love and nothing do i benefit love is patient is kind love is not jealous love is not bragging is not puffed up is not indecent, is not self-seeking, is not incensed, is not taking account of evil. 2 Corinthians 11.29 Who is weak, and I am not weak, 
who is snared, and I am not on fire. 2 Corinthians 6 3. We are giving no one cause to be stumble in anything, lest flaws be found with the service. This verse was not um, among the references, but it fits so well here. Ephesians 1 15 to 19. Therefore, I also, on hearing of this faith of yours in the Lord Jesus, and that for all the saints, do not cease giving thanks to you, for you, making mention in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may be giving you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the realization of him, the eyes of your heart having been enlightened, for you to perceive what is the expectation of his calling and what the riches of the glory of the enjoyment of his allotment among the saints, and what the transcendent greatness of his power for us who are believing in accord with the operation of the might of his strength. I love you all. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord, Jesus Christ. Well, there you have it, guys. That was a message from Michael Knotts, from Sterling, Alicia and Judy, and Marsha Knotts, and anyone else who was contributing to this beautiful beautiful message i love you all so so much it really inspired me to make this video again the, these are not my words those are those guys words who put this all together they're all beautiful and i love you all grace and peace